the Nonprofit Podcast, powered by DonorBox. Your nonprofit's brand helps you stand out in a crowded space and helps build credibility and trust. Nonprofit branding is challenging, though, because it involves capturing your organization's complex mission in a simple, powerful message. And we're often trying to get it done with limited resources. Today, we hope to make it just a little bit easier for you. Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Kara. I'm a nonprofit leader and fundraiser, and I have the honor of serving as podcast correspondent for DonorBox. We're here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. Joining us today is Dustin Gladwell, a seasoned marketing expert. He's worked with some big organizations, especially in the Miami, Florida area, but he's also a nonprofit leader, founder, and fundraiser, and a DonorBox user, just like many of us. Dustin has a super cool nonprofit that pairs military veterans and rescue dogs and gives them each a reason to live. Welcome, Dustin. Thank you. Well, Dustin, you helped me recently think through some branding with my own nonprofit, and I knew that you'd be helpful to all of us out there wrestling with an unclear or inconsistent brand that could really be diluting the messaging and mission of so many nonprofits. So let's maybe get started and talk about some ways to make branding not so intimidating. Sound good? Sounds good. Let's do it. Awesome. Well, let's start with this. So why is it crucial for nonprofit organizations to prioritize their brand? How does a strong brand contribute to that overall mission and impact? Those are really good questions to start off with because branding, whether you are in the for-profit space or the nonprofit space, is simply how people find you. If you don't market, people don't know that you exist. Nonprofits have an additional challenge in the marketing and branding space because not only are you competing for donations and fundraising dollars with other nonprofits, you literally are competing with people's finite money and resources and things they want to spend money on. So in the nonprofit world, we also compete with for-profit companies, institutions, organizations. If branding is not prioritized, people simply will never learn about your mission. Right. So I often say, you know, if, if I have $100 to give, I could give it to your nonprofit, I could give it to the the charity down the road, or I can go buy a new pair of shoes. And so it's up to your nonprofit to show me why you are the best value for my dollar. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, 100%. So what are some common challenges nonprofits face in maintaining a consistent brand presence and maybe some tips on how to overcome those challenges? I think the first and probably biggest challenge that a nonprofit faces in maintaining a consistent brand presence is twofold, but they're related. Number one is, can you find somebody who's good at branding and marketing and advertising and knowing how to create a true brand strategy and brand presence? And then the second part is related to that is because then the people who know what they're doing are not cheap. So it, it's it's very hard for nonprofits to be able to have a good marketing strategy and presence and then, then afford them. Overcoming them is is also tricky. I think a lot of it is so much in the marketing world, and, and this 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 applies to both for profit and nonprofit, but especially a nonprofit I'm I'm learning through our own efforts. When money's tight or it's a tight month or fundraising goals and things aren't being met. It's easy for any organization or any person to say the first thing we're going to cut is our marketing budget. It's actually counterintuitive, but that's often wrong. You've got to figure out how to maintain something. So to borrow on your $100 analogy, let's say my organization has $100 to do everything this month. And let's just keep that 100 because it's easy math, right? Hopefully we have more than $100. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. But let's just say, you know, if, if if 30% of your costs are your employees and you know 10% of your costs is your mortgages and your overhead and just whatever the case might be, and if you can squeeze out 10% for your marketing or even a few percent, the reality is the rule of thumb in every organization, in every industry, in every space will be slightly different. But if, if an organization can really prioritize and really be smart with what they're doing, you know, you really want to try to be eight to 10% of your budget in marketing. Wow. Again, that's tricky. And in this space, especially in a startup environment, especially in a startup nonprofit or a small nonprofit, or like so many of us in the nonprofit space, we are literally scrapping by every day to keep our mission moving. 
that eight to 10% might not be realistic. And I'm totally aware of that. That said though, it can't be zero. This day and age, what we're learning, and it seems to be trending across the country, social media, for example, is an affordable way to reach a lot of people. It can be done for a couple hundred dollars a month. If you are an entity, for example, that needs to make, whether it's a local impact or regional impact or a national impact, even if you can budget five to $10 a day, you can still hit thousands and thousands of people. Now that may not move the needle. A lot of current trends show that social media giving are going down. Social media marketing is still becoming saturated and the, the conversion rates may be very low, but at least you're doing something. Even if that means you're boosting a few posts on Instagram or Facebook, but at the end of the day, that is just a piece of the strategy. The most important thing is going to be put somebody on your board, find a friend, find a family member, find somebody who believes enough in what you're doing, who can help you find that marketing and that branding expertise, and then see what you can get out of that. It's imperative these days to have somebody that knows what they're doing, because if you look like you don't know what you're doing, people may have a hard time trusting and giving you money. Yeah, for sure. It's more than just slapping a logo on things and getting it out the door. You really have to communicate who you are, the essence, the values, the vision. And it would also be helpful to have, like you mentioned, on your board, someone that can advocate come budget time for the importance of adding marketing within your budget. That is brilliant. Yes. You need somebody who can wear that hat because too many of us try to wear too many hats. Yeah. And if you're not good at that one, mm -hmm. And that's the thing. We all have to figure out what we're the best at, right? It's like, if, it, and so many nonprofits fail because we all are passionate about what we do. We have a cause and we literally look at it and say, we're going to change this little piece of the world that's important to us. And it's amazing, but it might not mean you're good at the sales side. You might not be a good fundraiser. You may not be good at marketing. You may not be good at everything, but you're wearing a lot of hats. The hats that count the most are the ones you need to find the most help with. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think this is one of them. For nonprofit founders, fundraisers, whomever looking to enhance their brand, do you have any practical tips or action steps that you can recommend they take, even if we're not skilled in that area? There are a lot of good resources out there these days. That is one of the benefits of having so much information at our fingertips. You know, there there are a lot of good resources online. There are good there are good things out there like masterclass. It's an amazing product and service. There are things like this podcast and, and tips and guides and PDFs and, and, and you and I have shared them as me being a donor box customer, find the resources, find the people that obviously do know what they're doing and see what tools and, and, and tricks and, and tidbits you can, you can glean from that information. Again, I know that's kind of maybe a general and a, and a broad answer, but you have to start somewhere. And that might even be just educating yourself enough to learn something new to then know what you need to go find. So a quick personal anecdote with our nonprofit. So in addition to our canine program, we also have an equine program that we use to help veterans because horses are also another amazing tool as animals to help create this healing journey. I learned from a, another psychologist that horses are just as good as dogs, but I had never in my life had horse experience, even though I thought it was amazing. So when we set up this plan and when we, when, when we set up our organization, I never in a hundred years thought, you know what, I'm going to turn into Kevin Costner and get my own Yellowstone ranch and all of a sudden be a cowboy. No, but what I knew is I need to go find somebody who knows what they're doing. And so I have to educate myself in that aspect, even just enough to know what I need to go find. And so for founders and fundraisers, try to enhance your brand. You have to go seek out information that will empower you to know what you need. I, I had a, a very successful family business friend, older, he's my parents' age. Um, and we were very close, even in my teenage and younger years very wealthy, successful businessman in South Florida, and also a huge philanthropist. And he won award, an award, a very large civic award in the city of Miami. And he said, I'm successful by surrounding myself with successful people. And that is more imperative in the nonprofit space, I think, even than in the for-profit space. Because at the end of the day, going back to my first thought, we are competing with everybody for everything. And you know, at the end of the day, we're asking people to give us something for something probably intangible in return. So the competition is even higher. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I had a misconception about branding. I kind of thought it was all about the logo. And working with you, Dustin, I learned more about what it means to embrace brand values and a brand archetype and things like that. So you shared with me some things that I've learned and now come through my writing. They come through my images. They come through what I'm doing. Now, I'm not doing it great, and I know that I have room to improve, but without even the awareness that those things, you know, brand archetype and brand voice and brand values even existed, I would really just be slapping a logo on a lot of my outgoing communication and just leaving it at that. So I appreciate that you knew those things and knew enough to share them with me. But are there any other common pitfalls or misconceptions about nonprofit branding that you hear about or you see others doing and how can we avoid them? I think you segued perfectly into that question. You don't know what you don't know. And so I think a lot of those pitfalls or misconceptions are like what you said. So many people just think, you know, slap a logo on it. That's big and that's small. You you need a logo, you need a presence, you need some kind of branding. One of the things that I encourage people to do both in the for-profit space and in the nonprofit space is it's, it's a very simple challenge. It's a very simple test. And, and sometimes it's easier said than done. But if I were to show your logo and show your branding and show your messaging, whatever your marketing and brand presence are in the world, but I remove your name, would somebody look at it Ooh. and think you're somebody else? That is brilliant. Yes. You know, like I worked in the cruise industry there in South Florida for a while too. I've worked for two of the biggest brands and, um, and a couple of those cruise companies they're Fortune 500 companies. Sometimes we fall into what we call in the advertising world the sea of sameness. Mm. And then in reference to the cruise industry, yeah, you go, ha pun intended, right? The sea of sameness. Let's look at two cruise companies that compete out of the same city for the same cruises around the world. If you took the name, the printed letters of your name off and you only saw the visuals, would somebody be able to tell Royal Caribbean from Carnival? Oh, I don't the answer know. Is, yeah, if the answer is no, then that brand message, chances are, I won't make an absolute, but chances are it's failed. Same thing for us in the nonprofit space. Because again, we're competing for every extra dollar that somebody has. Does your branding stand out? How do you make sure that your messaging and your cause and your mission shine? Well, it has to be that you don't just think I'm slapping a logo on it. It has to be, what's the perception? So then to your point about when we looked at some of your branding, what do you want people to think? What do you want people to feel in our case even more? And these days, people want to see authenticity. And that's that's candidly been a struggle we've had in our, our nonprofit here, Charlie Mike, is sometimes because I bring this background, we've gotten some feedback saying, oh, well, your content and your branding and your marketing and your website and your stuff looks so good. We think you don't need any money because you guys must have a thought of it. It's like, well, that's actually Wait. not even... Not even close. So go. We, we need your money. Yeah, yeah. We 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 just know what we're doing on that side. But people do want to see authenticity. They do want to see the message. And so the way you craft your voice and the way you craft a brand persona. And for people that don't know what a brand persona is, it is a fictional archetype. It is the kind of feeling that you want people to elicit. Like we use the example of. Uh, you know, the everyman archetype might be Target and Ikea and everyman meaning it's accessible to everybody. It's you go to that store, you go to that location, we have something for everybody. Everyone's welcoming everyone. You know, there's a solution and something for, for there. We look at brands like Apple and you go, oh my gosh, they're genius. They're creators, they're tech, they're savvy. You know, like uh, Harley Davidson is what we would call the archetype of the rebel. And rebel doesn't mean bad guy. It just means you do your own thing. And when when everyone is zigging, you're zogging and you're going against the grain and finding ways to stand out. And and I think a lot of times that's undervalued of not finding ways to stand out. And I think that is a pitfall. Um, we a lot of times fall back on what we know or I saw somebody do that and let's see if we replicate it. I think that's a pitfall. I think that's a misconception. We fall back on our comfort zone so often. I think in this day and age, and here's an interesting stat for everybody, the average person every day, because we have our, our computers and our iPhones and our social media, and we go to the grocery store, or you drive down the highway and see billboards, the average person is literally exposed to two to 3,000 brand messages every day. Whoa. True stat. You can look yeah. it up. I mean, well, it's, and th there's even some sources that suggest it's higher. 
It makes sense. Think about it. Even if you spend 10 minutes on Instagram, how many branding messages scroll through your feed? How many different businesses or nonprofits that you follow? And then how many ads pop up in the span of that 10 minutes? You're, you are the product, right? You're, if you're not paying for something, you're the product. So they're trying to make money off you. And so at the end of the day, it's the same thing as how do we stand out? An interesting study also came out several years ago that compared the modern day consumer, and this is actually quite an embarrassing stat, unless it's people, we have less of an attention span than a goldfish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Biologically, the goldfish can pay attention for like seven to nine seconds. When you're on social media or trying to capture someone's attention, you have like three. Mm -hmm. And so again, it's, it's what do you want people to see and think and feel and don't discount any of it. Another pitfall, which connects to your earlier question, because you can't discount it. And so if we're building on this and we know that we need marketing, we know that we need someone to help our branding, we know that we need somebody who's capable and competent to help us make a decent brand. And that doesn't necessarily mean expensive. Capable and competent does not necessarily equal to ex equate to expensive. And somebody who is genuinely willing to help you will help you find, you know, get every dollar's worth and, um, and then help you figure out how to stand out. Again, if, if everybody is doing X, you want to do Y because you need to be memorable. Mm -hmm. And clear. And that's the problem I was running into personally with my nonprofit. We had a visual image that could have been any type of nonprofit across the world anywhere. We had a name that was kind of ambiguous and didn't speak to our mission. So you actually helped us clarify that. Um, when I was working with you on the brand archetype and trying to identify who we are most like, what we did is we took kind of a snapshot, you know, a, just a mental snapshot of who are our donors. So we looked at some of our biggest donors and what characteristics and values do they have? What What do they enjoy in their free time? That kind of thing. We looked at our millennial donors. We looked at our monthly donors. We looked at our donors who are volunteers and roll up their sleeves every week and come in. And I looked at who might be a potential donor. So an uh, a area business that really wants to engage. So I kind of wrote all those out and thought through what is the one thing that they have in common? What is something that they all value? And we kind of, we kind of embraced the everyman archetype and then we learned about what kind of colors resonate with that. So it was really kind of a very big journey and experience. Um, and I know with Charlie, Mike, you have kind of the adventurer, uh, the rebel, the, mm -hmm. the, that kind of archetype. Is that right? Like off-road? Yeah. Yeah. It's, and there's even an archetype in that wheel of the 12 archetypes that all goes back to Jungian psychology of the hero. And it'd be easy to say, oh, a veteran nonprofit, you're the hero. We didn't do that because everybody is the hero. You know, you even look at our brand colors, it's navy blue and brown, not red, white, and blue, like nine out of 10 every, it's easy to be like, oh, veterans, just be patriotic and red, white, and blue. Again, so we're trying to find things that connect to the community. All branches of service use navy blue, and then all of us have some kind of brownish field uniform or something these days, right? So it's, how do we maintain things, but then not look like anybody else? And so when you guys went through that exercise, I think, uh, I think you nailed that and, and did a good job as well. Well, thanks. And, you know, and I know, Charlie, Mike, um, you have an innovative approach at looking at veterans and caring for veterans and then caring for horses for equine and um, canines, too, and bringing them all together just to kind of bring healing and homes and purpose to everyone in that model. So lastly, for our listeners interested in learning more about working with you or learning more about Charlie, Mike, where can they go to find more information? We try to keep it pretty simple, charliemike.org. And Charlie Mike is a uh, military speak for continue the mission. So we use the phonetic alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. And so Charlie with an IE at the end, not an EY, charliemike.org. And then my email is simply Dustin, D-U-S-T-I-N, at charliemike.org. Awesome. Well, we'll be sure to link that in the show notes, too, for people who want to take a look at your branding and reach out to you to learn more. So Dustin, this was so insightful. I love this conversation. So thanks for helping to break down a complex topic and for joining us today. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Thank you. And thank you, our listeners, for choosing to spend your time today with the Nonprofit Podcast. I hope you've left with the confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Be sure to click the download button on your podcast player, then leave the Nonprofit Podcast a review or give it a thumbs up if you're listening to the Nonprofit Podcast on YouTube. 
Your review really is a great way to help others find us. You're here to help others and we're here to help you. So until next time, stay inspired. That warm feeling when you help someone, it's not just happiness, it's fulfillment. And we believe it should be available to everyone. From frontline heroes to first time fundraisers, our tools empower you to help others. This is our mission. This is DonorBox, helping you help others.